You may be new to our channel or may have forgotten what's come before. So every three months we're doing a general recap special so you can refresh your memory or catch up. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to a Great War recap special covering the months of November and December 1915 and January 1916. As November began, there were major offensives in progress on both the Western and Italian fronts. On the Italian front, the Third Battle of the Isonzo River ended early in the month, but only a week later, the Fourth Battle of the Isonzo River began, with pretty much the same objectives. Casualties were high for both the Italians and their Austro-Hungarian opponents, and heavy winter weather put an end to the Fourth Battle December 10th. Italian troops going home for Christmas leave brought tales of misery and suffering that caused morale to plummet throughout Italy. But Army Chief of Staff Luigi Cadorna planned to pursue the same tactics of frontal assault in the new year, even though it was often against machine gun positions and unbroken barbed wire. Over the winter, Austria-Hungary would recruit over 800,000 middle-aged men aged up to 49 to replenish the ranks of the fallen. On the Western Front, two great offensives in Artois and Champagne came to an end in early November with casualties in the hundreds of thousands. For the remainder of the year, and in January 1916, there were skirmishes along the whole front line, artillery duels and increased action in the skies, but no major battles as both sides hatched plans for enormous new offensives that would take place in the new year. The British Commander-in-Chief, John French, resigned in December after losing the confidence of his troops and was replaced by Sir Douglas Haig. General Joseph Joffre remained in charge of the French troops in France, but was raised to Commander-in-Chief of the French troops everywhere else as well. And winter set in. But winter had already arrived on the Eastern Front by the beginning of November. And in the North, the frozen ground made it impossible to quickly dig trenches, thus ending major offensive maneuvers there. Just after Christmas, further south, the Russians launched a big offensive in Bessarabia and eastern Galicia and scattered actions as far north as the Pripet Marshes. But this offensive was beset by supply problems that nearly starved the soldiers. And though it continued for three weeks or so, it didn't manage to take any new ground and just produced thousands upon thousands of dead Russian, German, and Austro-Hungarian soldiers. Late in January, Russia also launched another offensive, this one through the Caucasus into Anatolia. And as the month ended, they had pushed back the Turks towards Erzurum, almost surrounding them at one point. In spite of that, though, things were looking up for the Ottoman Empire. In December and January, the British evacuated all of their troops from Gallipoli in what was a brilliantly organized maneuver. However, it still conceded failure after eight months of bloody stalemate. And in Mesopotamia, a British army that had been advancing up the Tigris River towards Baghdad found itself trapped and under siege at Kut al Amara in December. In January, a rescue operation tried and failed to relieve them, so there they remained. And throughout this whole period, there was action in the Balkans. The invasion of Serbia by Bulgarian, German, and Austro-Hungarian forces that began in early October continued in November to its successful conclusion and the remnants of the Serbian army, along with hundreds of thousands of civilian refugees, fled into the freezing mountains of Albania, trying to get to the coast. 200,000 of them would die on their journey, but by mid-January, the Allies were taking them daily by the thousands from Albanian ports to the Greek island of Corfu, where the Serbian army could hopefully regroup and be reconstituted into a fighting force. Also in January, the Austro-Hungarian army continued its Balkan adventures by invading Montenegro. Within a couple of weeks, the country had been overrun and had accepted Austrian terms of surrender. Much of the Montenegrin army, however, had fled into Albania. So the Austrian army invaded Albania as the month drew to a close. The British and French forces that had tried to help the Serbs during the invasion of Serbia were pushed out of Macedonia by the Bulgarian army in November and early December, and were now stationed at Salonika, which they turned into a huge military base despite both rampant malaria and the protests of the Greek government and people, who vehemently objected to their neutrality being repeatedly violated by the Allies. In Africa, a new front opened in November, the Libyan Front, and Senussi tribesmen there harassed British and Egyptian forces, while further to the south, German Cameroon had all but fallen to British, French, and Belgian troops. And that's where we stand. 
13 active war zones and fighting in progress in Europe, Asia, and Africa. The British blockade of Germany continues. German U-boats continue their attacks, and the Russian Black Sea fleet sinks hundreds of Ottoman ships. Serbia has fallen, as has Montenegro, and Albania is now under attack. The combined casualties on the eastern, western, and Italian fronts for just these three months are over half a million, as those three fronts fall quiet for the time being. The British leave Gallipoli, are under siege at Kut, and fortify at Salonika with the French, violating Greek neutrality even though they went to war in the first place when Germany violated Belgium's neutrality only 18 months ago. Only 18 months. Casualties in the millions. New nations being drawn into the conflict month after month. Offensives on a scale never before imagined being planned. As January 1916 ended, two things were very clear. There was no end in sight, and the war was only going to grow larger. If you'd like to refresh your knowledge about the first year of the First World War, you can click here for our recap playlist. Don't forget to subscribe and to introduce us to your history teachers. See you next time.